let's start by creating a new class for the car. So click on the new class button in the upper left corner of your BlueJ project window. We're going to name this class car. And then we're going to open that up to focus on our code. All right, we need to update some of the comments a little bit. So write a description of the car class here. All right, we're going to keep it simple for now. We're just going to say this class models a car. So again, a useful but incomplete representation of a, of a car. Um, we're going to re put our GitHub username by the author and today's date by the version. And then I'm going to delete everything between the outer curly brackets for the class because we're going to write this class from scratch. We're going to start with declaring the methods. And we're going to focus first just on the method headers. So again, these are the verbs that come up in conversation as we were looking at those use cases. Um, these are the methods that describe the behavior of our car class, at least for the limited car class model that, that we're doing. Um, we, we've, we haven't really focused on how to write a method before. We had some we had to have in the last unit, but let's be a little bit more explicit here. So I'm going to do a slash star enter comment block and specify here's exactly what is in a method header when we write a new method. Okay. So when defining a method, specify several things. The first identifier that we write is called the visibility. Visibility. For example, public. Another option is, is private. Um, most of our methods are going to have public visibility, meaning code in other classes can call the methods. That's kind of the whole point. Right? If the methods on the turtle class were not public, we couldn't tell our turtle to go forward or turn left. Right? And that wouldn't be very useful. So most of our methods are going to be public. The second word, the second identifier, is the return type. When we call a method, a method may return a value, um, in which case we'd specify what type is that value. Is this method returning a color? Is it returning an int? Um, or maybe it doesn't return a value, right? When we tell our turtle to go forward, it doesn't return anything. So the return type could just be void, meaning there is no return value. The third identifier we're going to specify is the method name. That's pretty important. What's the name of the method? So for example, we're going to write a drive method in just a moment, which is the method called by other software to say, hey, the card's driven this far. Update the, the gas accordingly. And then after the method name, we always have parentheses. Um, but there may be stuff in the parentheses. And it depends on, is additional information needed? So for example, when we tell the turtle to go forward, we have to specify how far. Um, when, we, when we call the method drive, we have to specify, well, how far did the car drive? So after the method name are the parameters. And there could be more than one. And their types. Okay. This is the definition for the method. We have to tell Java not only how many parameters they are, not only what are the names of the parameters, but what are the types of the parameters. So for example, for the drive method, maybe the name of the parameter is distance, um, and its type is a double, because you could certainly drive a fraction of a mile. So these are the four things that we're going to focus on for every method that we write today. Okay. So let's write our first, first method. Let's, one thing we're certainly focused on with our car software is the car is going to be driving. And we're going to keep track of the fuel. So this method is going to be public, like most of our methods will be. Uh, the drive method doesn't need to return a value, so the return value is void. That's the second identifier. The third thing we need is the method name. This method will be called drive. After the method name, we always have parentheses. If we need to, we 
uh, if more information is needed, we'll specify parameters. In this case, we definitely need more information. Well, how far are we driving? Well, we're going to have one parameter of type double called distance. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm going to have my opening and closing curly bracket for this method. So visibility is public, return type is void, method name is drive, one parameter of type double called distance. If we had multiple parameters, we just list them all there, separated by a comma. Yeah. We're we're going to worry about that when we get to like chapter four stuff. As we're defining our own classes, all of our methods um, are not going to be static. Um, we'll get into what that means in a lot more detail next chapter. So here's the thing. Um, we're not going to write any code inside the curly braces right now. Okay? What I'm going to model for you and then what we're going to practice throughout this unit is something called test-driven development. As we start to write more sophisticated software, we need a way of making sure it actually works. So as we write our code, we'll also be writing other code that tests our software to make sure it, it works. And test-driven development um, is a very popular and very effective way to make sure the code actually works. Um, and it's got a, a certain workflow that we will follow. So at this point, we're going to focus on writing the method headers, um, but not any of the implementation inside the curly brackets. We are going to make sure that our code continues to compile as we write it. So we'll come, we'll come back to the implementation later. We also need to write a little a comment to document our code, and we're going to do this in a, in a slightly different way. We're going to start our comment block with a slash and two stars, and then hit enter. And you'll notice that this comment block looks different than the one above it. Okay? When we start with slash star star, and we have one of those blue comment blocks, um, this is a javadoc comment. Okay? This tells the javadoc tool, hey, this comment's really important because it's documenting this class, um, and we're going to see how that all works before the end of class today. Okay. So whenever we want to, we certainly want to document all of our methods, because otherwise, how will other people know what they do? Imagine trying to do the turtle lab with zero documentation. That would have been pretty frustrating. Um, so we're going to document our drive method. And we're going to start with a short description of what the method does. Um, we're simply going to say, um, we call this method to Account, I'm trying to think of a good verb. Account that this car has driven the specified distance consuming fuel. Because we're all about tracking fuel and stuff for this class that we're writing. So some other software is going to call the drive method on our car object. Um, and, and this class will need to account for the fact that, oh, we drove this distance. That consumes some fuel. Let's, let's account for that. So that's like a good summary of like what this class does. Um, we, we also want to make sure we document every parameter. right? If someone sees this method header, um, now they have a sense of, OK, this is what the drive method does, but what, what does distance mean? Um, and it may seem obvious, like, oh, of course, it's how far the car drove. But look at some of the stuff that is actually really important that we might otherwise forget. To document a parameter, we start with the at symbol and then param. This tells the javadoc tool, hey, this is a parameter, special documentation here. Immediately following at param, we need to have the name of the parameter. Okay, Because if we have multiple parameters, we need to be clear which one we're documenting at any given moment. So at param distance. And then we need to document that particular parameter. We're going to say it's the distance. And here's the important information that so often is forgotten. In miles, this car drove. Because what if someone, if we weren't clear with their documentation, they might assume it's kilometers. 
and they're specifying distances in kilometers, and our code assumes miles, and all of a sudden our poor owner of the car runs out of gas because the dashboard said they had three gallons left and really they have none, right? That's inconvenient, that wouldn't be good. Um, it could be a lot worse, right? We could be writing software at NASA for a Mars mission and we could not specify our units and mix them up and crash into the surface of Mars after months of flying there. That'd be pretty bad too. Um, so documentation is super important, units are super important, so we wanna be clear about stuff like that. All right, that's our first method, excellent. We have a nice description, we've documented the parameter, we're gonna leave the method body, that is the thing between the curly brackets, empty for now. All right, what else came up in our discussion? Well, another method that came up was the idea that we're gonna add fuel to the car's tank. So that would be public void. So again, the visibility is public. There is no return value, so the return type is void. The method name, let's go with add fuel. Is more information needed? Absolutely. How much fuel? Uh, let's use a double again, because we can certainly put in fractions of a gallon. Uh, you, when you read the pump, you know, it might be 7.523 gallons. And this will be the amount of fuel we added. We'll have the curly brackets again, but no code inside of them. And we need to document this method as well. So slash star star enter to do a java.comment comment block. And we'll describe this method as adds the specified amount of fuel to this car's tank. And there's a parameter here that we need to document. So at param, the name of the parameter is amount, and the documentation is gonna be the amount of fuel in gallons, be clear about our unit, to add to this car's tank. We now have two methods declared and documented. Yes? Oh, like after, like this larger space here? Um, I usually just hit tab just to separate like the tag and the variable name from the description. It's, it does not, as long as there is a space, it doesn't matter. All right, well remember that the software team that's doing the dashboard software said that our car class needs to have a way that they can query and ask for get how much fuel is left in the tank. So they need an accessor method. So the visibility is gonna be public. The accessor method is gonna return how much fuel is currently in the car's tank. So it does return a value. And a, and a good type for that value would be a double, because there could certainly be fractions of a gallon in the tank. And we're gonna call this get fuel in tank. We don't need to specify any additional information. Um, because we're just gonna return the value. This is just a simple accessor. Something that you may notice is that our code has stopped compiling. And I want our code to always be compiling. Okay? And the reason why it stopped compiling and what the Java compiler is telling us right now, it says, hey, you're missing a return statement. You just declared a method that has a double return type, but you have no return statement. So that's not okay. But because we're doing test-driven development, we don't actually want to implement this method right now, but we want it to compile. So what we do is create what's called a method stub, um, meaning we're just gonna say return 0, 0.0. Okay. We're gonna return something such that the code compiles. It clearly isn't correct, but that's okay. And in fact, even desirable. And we're gonna see that later this week. We need to document this as well. So another slash star star for the documentation for get fuel and tank. Um, what does this method do? Well, it returns the amount of fuel in this car's tank. There are no parameters to document, so we don't have to worry about an at param. However, there is a return type that isn't void. Okay, there's a non-void return type. 
meaning we really need to clearly document what exactly does the value returned by this method mean. Okay. And this is going to seem a little repetitive, and it's going to seem a little tedious, and I agree with both of those. Um, however, we're going to see in, in a few minutes why it's still important to, to have this repetition. The way we document the meaning of the value returned is with the at return tag. And I'm just going to say almost the same thing. The amount of fuel, I'm going to add the unit in gallons in this car's tank. So that takes care of the, the team. The software team writing the dashboard is happy. Um, but we need to deal with the software team um, representing the service technicians who are going to be servicing the car. They need a way to get the vehicle identification number. So we need to write a method for that, another accessor method. Public. Um, I shared earlier that the vehicle identification number is a mix of letters and numbers. So a good return type would be a string. And usually our accessor methods start with get. So we're going to say get vin. We do want to be careful with abbreviations, but um, VIN is pretty universal in the automotive industry. Every, everyone using the software is going to know what that means. Again, this doesn't compile because we just said we had a method that will return a reference to a string, yet we have no return statement. So let's, let's just return an empty string for now. A pair of double quotes is our empty string. And we need to document this as well. Slash star star. What does this method do? It returns the vehicle identification of this car. So I kind of spelled it out here. Um, in the method name, no one wants to type get vehicle identification. That's ridiculous. But in the documentation, let's be explicit about what VIN is. In fact, I could even put it in parentheses after here to help our users make that connection. This method has no parameters, but again, it does have a non-void return type. So we better document what the return value means. Um, and it's pretty much exactly what we just typed. I'm just going to copy and paste this. So it's still repetitive, it's still tedious, but it returns the vehicle identification of this car. We have one more type of user and one more use case we need to account for, and that's the, the factory. When they build the car, they need to set this VIN. So we need a method in our class that will work for that. So this method will also be public. It does not need to return a value, so it has a return type of void. And like some mutator methods, they just start with set. So set VIN. We definitely need more information. Specifically, what's the VIN? So that should be a type string. And I'm going to call the parameter new VIN. And I'll have my pair of curly brackets. And we need to document this as well. So slash star star enter another java.comment block. This method, this basic mutator method, sets the vehicle identification bin of this car. It has a void return type, so we don't need the at return tag, but it does have a parameter, so we do need the at param tag. We could have multiple parameters, so we need to be clear about which one we're documenting. We're documenting the parameter new VIN. Just to be clear, the word after param must exactly match the name of the parameter that we're documenting. If these two don't line up, this isn't going to work in terms of what we're, we're about to do. So, um, What's the parameter? It's, you know, basic set methods like this are pretty repetitive as well. The new VIN is the vehicle identification of this car. So, 
and we hit compile, and it still compiles. This is great. So we have just declared several methods. And by declared, I mean we have the method headers. Um, we've got all of those written, and we've documented them. Um, we have not yet completed the definition of our class because we haven't implemented anything. In general, there's nothing between the curly brackets. We haven't done that part of the code yet. And that's intentional, and that's, this is our first step in test-driven development. But what I want to show you next is perhaps, I think it is, this is my favorite feature of Java. And I remember when this came out in Java, and I was not programming in Java at the time, we were all so impressed with this um, that we found a way and went out of our way and developed some extra tools and found some tools so that we could do this in C++. Because it solves a huge problem. So here's how software development used to work. You would write a bunch of code, and you'd get it working. And then you would open up Microsoft Word, and you would type pages of documentation that described what the class is that you just defined. Okay. And when you finish that documentation, you'd publish it on the web, or you'd upload it to some internal server at the company, and then you'd start writing more code. And the problem is that literally the very next day after you publish that Word document, you would change something about your class. You would add another method. You'd change a behavior of a method. You'd fix some bug, and the documentation was outdated. It was outdated the moment it was published because then you went back to writing code. And what Java, and specifically the Javadoc tool does, is it single sources the code that runs all of our method definitions with the associated documentation. And it does it in a way that makes it as easy as possible for the lazy programmers to actually document their methods as they go. So let's see how cool this is. Go to the Tools menu in BlueJay and select the Toggle Documentation view. It's Control-J or Command-J on the Mac. And what you will see is very professional looking documentation just that looks just like what we see when we go to the Oracle's website and look at their Java documentation. We didn't create all of this. The Javadoc tool created all of this based on our Javadoc comments. Every method that we wrote today is defined here in this nice method summary. I can click on add fuel and I can get the details of the add fuel method has the description, every parameter is documented, every return value is documented. Um, it looks super professional. It's going to be very useful to the people using our code. This is awesome. And just by clicking that button, all these HTML files were generated automatically and are now in your repository. 